Welcome to the Encourage Podcast. We are all different ages and different life stages, and we come from different cultures and churches, but our common thread is the hope of Jesus. Here's some of that hope to get you through today. Today's devotion is written by Kathy Lipp and is titled, A Crowded Kitchen is a Holy Place. There was a time when I wore my ability to do it all as a badge of honor. Hosting family gatherings meant late nights, early mornings, and a constant whirlwind of activity. I wanted my people to be able to come to our home and completely relax. Every detail was taken care of, and no one had to lift a finger because, well, I would make it all happen. But amid my well-intentioned frenzy, I missed out on the moments I was working so hard to create. Last year, as I faced the prospect of another holiday gathering, I felt a familiar wave of exhaustion wash over me. I was pre-tired. That is not how I wanted to approach our time together. I wanted to be excited about it, not dread all the work and the weariness afterward. With a mix of hesitation and hope, I reached out to my family with a simple request. What meal would you like to bring, cook, and clean up for our Thanksgiving weekend? Roger, my husband, And I will take care of the main meal, but I would love for each of you to prepare a meal that you love. And friend, the response was overwhelming, not just in their willingness to help, but also in the enthusiasm with which they embraced the idea. Our adult kids started to call and brainstorm, can we do breakfast on Saturday? And I've got the best recipe for baked Hawaiian roll sandwiches. As I watched the plan unfold, I was reminded of one of my favorite verses that I love to share with others and I need to apply often. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 NIV. What a beautiful truth this turned out to be. By sharing the load, we weren't just dividing tasks. We were multiplying joy. And part of that joy, seeing how my kids stepped up. I realized that in my previous attempts to shoulder much of the responsibility, I had inadvertently denied my loved ones the opportunity to contribute, feel needed, and be an integral part of our family tapestry. By letting go of control, I opened the door to a richer, more collaborative experience. As I reflect, I'm struck by the second part of our focus verse. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. How often had I been the one to fall into stress, exhaustion, or frustration with no one to help me up because I hadn't allowed anyone close enough to see my struggle? By embracing a community approach to hosting, I not only lightened my own load, but created a support system where we could all lift each other up. When the turkey cooked twice as fast as expected, it wasn't a crisis. It was an opportunity for teamwork as we rearranged serving times and moved our codenames game to after dinner instead of before. Alone, this would have been a crisis. Together, it was a chance to bond by overcoming a challenge. If you are considering a more collaborative holiday celebration, here are a couple of tips that might help you get started. Number one, ask early. The closer you are to your celebration, the harder it gets to ask for help. Ask now for people to plan a meal or a dish or two if your guests are just sharing one meal. Number two, ask what their specialty is or what they'd like it to be. I have one child who loves to cook breakfast and another one who is learning to make pasta. Let them do their thing. And for the kid who doesn't cook at all, he was in charge of garbage and recycling and helping with dishes. Number three, have a help list. Each year before everyone gets to the house, I create a list of tasks that people can help with. In the past, when helpful family and friends have asked what they can do to pitch in, I've been stumped in the heat of the moment and the kitchen. But with the help list, I know exactly what is needed. Here are some examples. Take the dog for a quick walk. Create the cheese tray. I have all the cheese, meats, pickles, olives, etc. in a drawer in the fridge. Set the table. Set up the drink bar, fill the ice bucket, hand wash big pots and pans, make coffee. 
Having the help list not only helps me, but it helps those I'm celebrating with feeling like they're part of things. As you approach your next family and friends gathering, I encourage you to embrace the wisdom of Ecclesiastes. Look for ways to involve others to share both the work and the rewards. Remember that in God's economy, our need for help is not a liability, but an opportunity for connection and grace. To read more from our writers, visit encourage.me. Subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss a single episode and find us everywhere on social at Encourage. Unlock a world of heartwarming entertainment with Hallmark Plus. Enjoy exclusive access to brand new movies and series featuring your favorite Hallmark stars, along with special perks just for you, including a free card each month and all your favorite Dayspring movies. Start your free trial today. Find the link at encourage.me slash podcast and in the show notes. The Encourage podcast is brought to you by Dayspring. For over 50 years, Dayspring has created quality cards, books, and gifts that help you live your faith. Find out more at dayspring.com. Dayspring.com.